Rolazabi and the female gaze. So I've been told to say three, two, one, go. Okay, Rolazabi was born out of 1930s American endurance competitions where people basically skated around in a circle for as long as they possibly could uh, in order to win a prize. And this showman called Leo Seltzer realized that the most interesting thing about these endurance tests was when people bashed into one another. So he decided to create a sport just about people skating around in a circle on roller skates and bashing into one another. Became hugely popular and was televised up until the 1970s. Um, uh, but it was like... WWF, so it was fixed, and they had kind of staged fights. Um, and the theatricality and the entertainment element of it kind of destroyed it as a sport, so it fell into disrepute. Um, the current reinvention was kickstarted in 2001 in Texas, and now Roller Derby is the world's fastest growing sport with an estimated 30,000 registered skaters across 1,000 leagues. And they've recently just held the Roller Derby World Cup in Toronto. And the sport's being considered alongside eight other shortlisted sports for the 2020 um, Olympics, which is pretty cool. Sheffield Steel Roller Girls uh, was started in 2009 by our very own uh, Jane Doagogo. Um, we've currently got nearly 90 members with two bouting teams, uh, the All-Stars and the Crucibles. And recently a men's team, the Inhuman League, joined Roller Derby in Sheffield. So, how do you play? First up, the kit. Um, as you can see, we skate on quads, so traditional roller skates, and uh, safety is sexy. You're not allowed on the track unless you've got knee pads, elbow pads, wrist guards, mouth guard, and helmet. And just to balance out uh, how awesome I look in that pic, this is what happened about four minutes after that was taken. <laughs> I broke my collarbone. Um, so when two teams uh, meet on the track, it's called a bout, and it lasts about an hour. And during a bout, teams will play a number of jams. And these are an up to two minute period of skating and scoring where each team fields five players, four in the pack and one jammer from each team. Jammers wear a star on their helmet um, and they're the players who can score points. So they need to skate as fast as they can through the pack, fighting their way through, aided by their team members and uh, with the other team members trying to block them by getting in their way. First of all, positional blocking, which is basically putting your ass in the way, or hitting, um, either with the shoulder or with the hips. Now, the first goal for a jammer is to be first out of the pack and get something called lead jammer status, which means they earn the right to call off the jam and basically control the timing of the scoring. Once they're through the pack, jammers got to skate around the track and meet the pack again. And once they've fought their, through, their way through again, it's on this second pass that they begin to score points. And they'll score one point for every uh, opposing member of the team that they pass. So it's a really fast-paced physical game with lots of different styles. So you've got all the way from like whippets, really nimble, agile players who can like scoot through the pack, all the way with everything in between to like proper she-hulks who hit really, really hard and you do not want to see them when they're angry. <laughs> so <laughs> lots of skaters have a skate name. This is likely to be based on a pun, it might be risque, probably references a pop culture a twist and says something about strength or violence mainly. In Sheffield, my favorite is Ruby Wax. We've got Jane Doe Gogo, Eva Von Goria, uh, Oblivion West. We've got loads of really, really cool names. Though lots of skaters are now choosing to skate under their own names as well. Now, it may have escaped your notice, but roller girls tend to wear hot pants. And there's a whole aesthetic and approach that sits alongside the physical activity of the sport, drawing from punk, DIY, burlesque, and it really plays with notions of femininity. Now, at our last bout, I overheard someone had said, isn't it a bit sexist, all of these women in hot pants? And my response was basically, no, 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 no. <laughs> but I couldn't really explain why. And basically, I came up with, because it's different, which isn't really a particularly cogent argument. I'm sure you agree. So, and this is me trying to figure out why is it different. So, in the 1970s, a feminist media theorist called Laura Mulvey introduced the concept of the male gaze. And underpinning this is the assumption in the production and consumption of media that the viewer is a heterosexual male. Now, even if we are ourselves not heterosexual males, any display of a woman's body is viewed through this lens. But I think the display in roller derby is different in lots of ways, but I'm going to talk about one of them. And that's the difference between display and doing. So first of all, display is certainly a part of the whole roller derby thing, but it's subservient to doing. So, so many images of what we see of women are so passive and inert and kind of homogeneously sexy that we have to stop and think about why it's different. So here Megan Fox is amply demonstrating for us her best sexy face. 
right? She's got dead eyes, she's kind of slack-jawed, her mouth is slightly open, like she'd do anything with it apart from, you know, actually have a conversation with you. And it's not just Megan Fox, it's kind of everybody, it's an epidemic. And I'm so bored of this being the, the image of women that we see. So let's compare and contrast. This is Misty, right? She doesn't have time for sexy face. She's so consumed with doing. And look at that, instead of dead eyes, we get focus, we get determination, we get joy. And it's sexy as hell, but it's certainly not sexy face. And there's a conversation that comes up distressingly often between women, and I call it the I hate my thighs conversation. And it's about women getting together to kind of share in their self-loathing and make each other kind of less, um, uh, less challenging to one another, and I hate it. And I want to scream, stop looking at your thighs as display objects, make them do something. Kind of make them move. Surprise yourself with what you can do with them, and you might start to feel differently. And you know what? Come and do it with some roller girls, and we'll tell you that your ass looks awesome in those hot pants while you do it. My daughter's nine, and like lots of other nine-year-olds, she consumes images of women in the media, actresses, models, and singers, people that she wants to be. And I started taking her to Roller's Army about 18 months ago, and she started to talk about the stuff that she wants to do. She wants to skate like Hot Rod. She wants to hit like Fury. And to me, that's a notion of femininity that I really, really want to encourage. So for me, Roller Derby is a tribe. It's about women being kick-ass. It's about achieving feats of amazing physical prowess, owning and organizing their own sports, and playing with femininity and sexuality in a way that's primarily about doing, not displaying. And I don't think that's something that should stay hidden for a moment longer. Woo!